God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. That, that I believe the Lord wants me to talk about today. And that is, it shall not prevail. It shall not prevail. In the name of Jesus. And no weapon that is fashioned against you shall be able to prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every weapons and coordination from the pit of hell against your life shall not prevail in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lord. And so let's set the stage together as we look at the book of Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13. And Jesus and his disciples began to have a conversation. And so it starts here from verse 13. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, he asked his disciples saying, there, there was, it was important for the disciples to understand whom they have come to rely on. While Jesus called them, if you remember, Peter and John and James and Andrew, and they were fishermen, uh, fishermen's sons, and Jesus came by and Jesus called them and said, Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And he went to the other disciples, task collectors, and he told them, follow me. And they left their trade and they followed him. They followed the man that they thought would be the deliverer of the children of Israel and the Jewish people from Roman suppression and oppression. And some of them came with a mindset to dominate the world and become rulers in their time. But they lacked a revelation of who Christ really was. So you can be and I can be a follower of Christ but don't know who I follow. It is a travesty for me to follow this Jesus and I have no conception of who he really is. And I believe that that set the stage for this conversation between Jesus and his disciples. They followed him. They seen the miracles. They seen what he has done and the preachings and those who were saved. But he wanted to challenge their mind to really know if they knew who they were following or what the agenda was or what the mission was. And it starts with a revelation. And I always say this things, when I catch a revelation, it will revolutionize my life. There's something about revelation. There's something about you now seeing who you really are. There's something about knowing what God said about you. There's something about knowing where you're going. There's something about knowing the plan of God for your life. There's something about knowing that I'm a chosen generation, I'm a royal priesthood, I'm a peculiar people, I've been called out of darkness into his marvelous life. There's something about knowing that I'm a child of God. There's something know knowing that God is my father and he is the commander in chief of the entire forces in heaven. That he can do anything. There's something knowing that with God, nothing shall be impossible. There's something about that. When a light leads up in you, it changes who you are. That's why the Bible says that the light came into darkness and darkness comprehended it now. When, when the light of God, the light of the gospel comes into a man's heart, it, it drives away the darkness in him. And there's something that happens to that man. And so Jesus wanted the disciples to see him and know him in a different light. Not just a man who walked the streets of Galilee, healed people, broke some bread, and, and multiplied food for others. But a man who had heaven's endorsement. That there's something about him and about his mission that's more than conquering the Roman Empire. And so Christ brought them all together. All 12 of these men. And they sat at a table. And unbeknownst to them, he threw to them a question to challenge them. And he said, what do men say that I, the son of man, am? What did they say that I am? And, and that sounds like a very simple question to them. And then they began to say what people said about Christ. 
And sometimes when, when God wants to reach you, he try to help you know where he's leading you to. And, and God, Jesus, is, is giving them some nugget to try to help them find their way. God never lets you be lost in the wilderness. Doesn't matter how thick it is. Doesn't matter how dark it is. Doesn't matter how deep it is. Doesn't matter how high it is. God will never let his children be lost in the wilderness. And so in this wilderness of question and answer, Jesus gave them some insight. What do men say that I, the son of man, am? What are they talking about out there in the society? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say thou art Elias. Or to say you are Jeremiah and one of the prophets. And now he said to them, after they said what all they say, now he said to them, but whom, but whom, but whom say ye that I am? Now you talked about other people and what they say about me, but I want to know what you say. Let me drill down into your heart. Let me hear from you what your belief system is. Let me know why you're following me. You following me because you want to go to heaven or you following me because you want to set up a kingdom on earth? Are you following me because we need independence from the Roman Empire or because we need independence from spiritual wickedness and oppression of the devil? Why exactly are you here? And so they said, he said to them, who do you say that I am? And Peter speaking for all of them. Peter, as their spokesman, don't, don't know if when Jesus asked them if they all put their head together. Because it was like an examination room. Christ examining them. What is in the core of their heart? What is in the core of their motive? And so Peter, the spokesman for the other 11, answered and said, Thou art the Christ. And this is where the ministry changed for the disciples. When this statement was made, Thou art the Christ. What does it mean when it says, Thou art the Christ? Thou art the anointed one. Thou art the one sent from God. Thou art the one upon whom the testimony came and the witness came from John the Baptist. It's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the whole world. And he said, thou art the Christ, not Christ, thou art the Christ. In other words, thou art the Messiah. Thou art the Savior. That's the one that the scripture talked about. You're the one that God spoke about through prophecy in the Old Testament. You're the consummation of the New Testament. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when they said that, Jesus answered back to them. And said to Peter, Blessed art thou, son of Jonas. And now we say, For flesh and blood had not revealed it to you. Which means that there are some revelation that comes from the realms of the flesh and blood. Flesh and blood here means humanity. There's some revelation that comes in the realm of humanity. But we're talking about divine revelation. We're talking about re divine revelation. And so it says, flesh and blood can reveal some things, but this one, flesh and blood, did not reveal it to you. Flesh and blood revealed to them that if they follow Christ long enough, they'll be prime ministers. If they follow Christ long enough, they'll be delivered from the slavery that they found themselves under Roman domination. If they follow him long enough, the elite of the society and the rulers of the temple that have oppressed them, joined the Roman Empire to impress them that they will now have a payback day. That's what the flesh was revealing to them. The flesh was revealing to them that you can have this whole world. You can live in this whole world. Everything starts and ends here. That's what the flesh revealed to them. The flesh revealed to them the exact opposite of what Christ has come to them. And so he said, but this one that you just said, it is not flesh and blood. And my question to us, what 
type of revelation of Christ do we have? Is it a revelation of the flesh or a revelation of the spirit? Is it a revelation of the flesh or a revelation of the spirit? The revelation of the spirit tells me that I got born again because I want to go to heaven. That's why I got saved. That when all is said and done, I want to be with Christ. That's the revelation of the spirit. The revelation of the spirit tells me, seek him for the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. That's the revelation of the spirit. The revelation of the flesh makes me hate people. The revelation of the spirit makes me to love everybody. The revelation of the flesh tells me that it is all about me. The revelation of the spirit tells me it's all about God. It's all of God and none of me. And so Jesus looked at Peter in the eye and said to him, This is not flesh. This is not blood. This is God. My heavenly Father had revealed this to you. Look at what he said. He said, And Jesus answered, Son of Jonah, For flesh and blood had not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. But my Father which is in heaven. In other words, my Father spoke through you today that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. And now look at what the Lord continued to say. He said, Thou art Peter. See, I know you are Peter. And he said, Upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And now many have said that Jesus was saying to Peter that the church will build upon Peter. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that upon the testimony, upon the revelation that the man just gave, he said, upon that testimony, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against them. And now, let's build our case this morning from bottom up. It said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, what is Christ saying by the word prevail? Prevail means victory. In other words, the gates of hell has no victory over it. The gates of hell has no victory over it. Now, what is the gate of hell? The other day we talked about the gate of heaven. When we talk about the gate of hell, what does that mean? Is it a physical gate that forms a barrier between those who are in and those who are out? That's not what it means. When you look, use the word gates in the Bible, it relates to authority. Lot was met at the gates of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah by the angels of God. He was there exercising judgment over the people. It was like the city hall. And so gates miss authority. So what he's saying is that there is an authority that wants to have victory over and against it. And Jesus declares, these are the exact words of Christ. And Christ declares that that gate of that authority shall not have victory over it or against it. And the word it, I-T, what is it saying? It means the church. It said the gates of hell shall not have victory over and against the church. And now what is the church? And nothing to do with these walls. We can have beautiful cathedral and God is not there. The church is you and me. They called our people. We are the church. Every single one person that's born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized everyone that God has called. We are the church. And so Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. Now, Jesus it's in the business of building you and building me. So if, if, I'm the, if I'm the church and you're the church and we're part of the church, then Christ is our builder. Christ is our builder. 
And he says, each time I am in the building of the church and the people, he said, nothing can stop it. In other words, my plan for the church or the people is that they be built. And when I build it, nothing can stop it. And now, back up a little bit. It said, I will. I will build. I will. So Christ is the one that takes responsibility for the building. I will. Because I will, it shall not prevail against it. So it, it looked like there is an opposing force that want to come against what Christ is doing. The plan and the purpose of Jesus for my life and your life. If there was no opposition, you wouldn't have the word prevail. The fact that there is that word prevail means that there is a struggle between Christ and Satan. And therefore, Jesus is saying that as long as I am the anchor of your life and your soul, it does not matter what the gates of hell try to do. It shall not prevail. In other words, it may try, but ultimately, I'm going to come out the winner. That's what the Lord is saying. <laughs> Glory to God. And, and until you understand who said, I will build your life. I will keep your life. I will be with you. Until you understand who said the word. Who is the I? Then you might not grasp the very fullness of what is going on here in this conversation. Christ is trying to impress in them. Do not worry about your life. I got your back. That as long as I am with you, there's nothing that can take you down or destroy you. That's what Christ is saying. Christ is saying to them, I have absolute power and I just want you to understand that you can depend on me. I want you to understand that you can trust me with your life. You can trust me with everything and I'm able to keep it against that day because all powers in heaven and on earth belong unto me. The one who said, I, the I in this is absolutely important to this conversation. And that's exactly what he wanted to impress in them. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And when you look at the Bible, you see Jesus manifested himself in several ways. Wherever he went, he was doing good. Glory to God. There, there was, when he was 12 years old, he came to the temple and he began to preach the word of God to them. Even those who were there before him could not comprehend what wisdom was in him. So in wisdom, he surpassed all of them at age 12. That's the man who said, I will build my church. Glory to God. And, and tradition tells us that when Christ was in his father's carpentry, sometimes he didn't need the nails. When the wood needs to be put together, he brings them together by miracle. Glory to God. That's the man who said, I will build my church. Glory to God. Even when he was a little boy, they couldn't kill him. Before Herod would get to him, the father said, take him out of town until Herod is dead. And I'll tell you, come back. That's the man who said to them, I will build my church. Glory to God. And, and, and this is Christ that when, when he started ministry and the Bible said they brought unto him all sick 
people, everyone that was in pain, as they brought them all to him, he said he healed them all. He had absolute authority against disease and sicknesses. Not only disease and sicknesses, those who were possessed by devils, when they came to him, the Bible said he set them free by the power of God. That's Jesus who said, I will build my church. So he's got power over demonic forces. Glory to God. And this is what Jesus is trying to make them understand. Food ran out, and they said, we have no food to feed them all. And he said to them, what you got? You got some pieces of breast, pieces of, of fish? I'll multiply them. And he fed 5,000, fed 4,000. Jesus, the one telling them, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail again. So in provision, he is superfluous. He can provide all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. So the Lord is saying that you can depend on me. Hallelujah. And when, 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 they, when, when they saw him from my father, they said they saw a ghost. Who is this coming? It looked like a ghost or a spirit. And it was the Christ walking on water. Glory be to God. And, and when he got on the boat and they said, them, let's go over to the other side. And there was a great wind and a great tempest. The Bible said, but serious tempest. And Jesus looked at the wind that the storm and said, peace be still. And the Bible said there was a great calm. And every one of them marveled, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the wave obey him. This is this Jesus that said to them, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's the same Christ that went to the grave and the grave could not contain him because he told them that on the third day I will rise again. And just as he said, when it was Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, the man came out of the dead and manifested himself to 500 by many infallible proof. And you could not deny that Jesus Christ was alive. And he ascended into heaven. And he said, all powers in heaven and earth is given unto me. And that's why the book of Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9 says that God has highly exalted him, given him a name that's above every name, at the name of Jesus. Every nail should bow, whether it be in heaven on earth or under the earth. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God, the Father. That is the same Jesus that said to them, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise the Lord. And, and when, you, when you fast for what you go in the book of Revelation, he is the Alpha and the Omega. And so that's why I said, if you want to know him better, tell somebody, do you want to know him better? <laughs> Glory, then you better read the book. <laughs> Glory be to the name of the Father. If you want to know him better, then you better read the book. <laughs> because the Bible tells me not only that Jesus Christ did all the things that he did in the book of, uh, in the gospel, but when you get into the revelation, you begin to see him in a different way. And he said, I am, and, and, that, and that speaks again to the interaction between God and Moses. And when Moses stepped by and said to God, I'm going into Egypt. If the elders would have asked me, who sent me, what would I tell them? And the Lord said to him, tell them that I am, that I am. In other words, I'm self-existent. I can be whatever I want to be. I can do whatever I want to do. I can remove whatever I want to remove. I have absolute power over everything. That's what God was saying to Moses. Go to tell Pharaoh that I am that I am. I have been, I am, I continue to be. I am the Alpha, I am Omega. I'm the beginning, I'm the end. And when you go to the book of Revelation, that's how he was described. And this is this Jesus that said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So when, when we talk about church, like I said, talking about you, talking about you, talking about you, talking about you. And so if Christ said, I'm going to hold you up, I'm going to build you up, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against what I do, all I need to do, all you need to do, is to put your life in the hand of Christ. Because you know that if you are hid in Christ and Christ in God, there is no weapon that is fashioned against you that shall be able to prosper. That's why the Jordan water could not take down the disciples. It could not take them down. Why? Because Jbecause Jesus was in the boat. And if Jesus is in your boat, it doesn't matter 
what the wind look like. Doesn't matter what the wave look like. This same Jesus had the power to step up to the power of the ship and say to the wave and say to the wind, peace be still. And the Bible said there'll be great calm. There'll be calmness in your life and my life if I have a revelation of the one who stand on my side, tall and imposing, glory to God. And he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Glory to God. And that's the Jesus I come to introduce to you today. That's the Christ that I come to introduce to you today. Glory be to God. So be encouraged this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Be encouraged this morning. Because Jesus is on your side. Jesus is with you. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, he's right there with you. Because he made a commitment that I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I'll be there in time of trouble. I'll be there in time of trial. I'll be there in time of tribulation. I'll be there in good time. I'll be there in bad time. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's the one who has the power over everything. Glory be to God. And so if I got him on my corner, I have nothing to fear. I have nothing to worry about. I will not let Satan bring me down on my knees. Because I know who is with me. Glory be to God. And he's that Jesus that said, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against them. They may try. They may win some battles. But I know they can never win the war. Glory to God. I know they cannot win the war. At the end of the day, I am going to come out more than a conqueror and overcomer in this world. Because that's what daddy said to me. That's what daddy said I am. That I am more than a conqueror and an overcomer in this world. That is who I am. Glory to God. I'm not less than that. That is who exactly I am. More than a conqueror and an overcomer in this world. No matter what the world throws at me, I still will come out an overcomer in the final analysis. Glory be to God. And I like to say it like this. I like to say it like this. When the storm is over, I will still be standing. Glory to God. Glory to God. When the storm is all over. Bible didn't say there won't be storm or wind or wave. But when it's all over, I will still be standing. Because my staying power is the rock. Glory to God. I'm built upon that rock. Glory to God. I stand upon that rock. Glory. As long as I stand upon it and stay with it, when the storm is all over, I'll still be standing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I give you the glory right now. I give you the praise right now. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promise. Thank you, Lord, because you said you will. You will. You will. You said it, God. I will. I will. I will. Thank you for the authority with which you spoke the word. And, Lord, you said it shall not prevail. You will, but it shall not prevail. And, Father, we thank you because, Lord, we are built upon the testimony of the word of God. Lord, we thank you. That testimony that says that you are the Christ the son of the living God. Lord, upon you will rest our faith. Upon you will rest our hope. And Father God Almighty, we just pray that as we leave this place today, we'll leave with a revelation of whom we serve. The King of kings and the Lord of all laws, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and the first and the last, the Lion and the Lamb. And God, we thank you for who you are. We give you the praise and the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray, Amen, amen, and a mighty big amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Lord. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 830 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. 
Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nation.